Good evening. Good evening. That should that should <laughs> be me live, I think. Right, I'm just tightening up my watch. Wait for everything to kick in. Let's have a quick look. Looks live. Looks live. A couple of seconds in. Good evening. Welcome. How is the sound? Is it syncing today? Looks like it might be syncing better. The picture's not fantastic, though, is it? Um, damn it, Facebook. Um, okay, cool. Right, I'm just going to wait for a few people to drop in. Uh, what an exciting week this week. And I'm just going to get cracking because today, believe it or not, if you didn't see the title, today is Join Joel number 26. 26. That means we've done six months. And I say we because it's not just me, it's you guys as well. We've done six months of Join Joel's, um, which, let's be honest, it's been a, a massive undertaking. It's been a big undertaking for me, but I think it's probably been a bigger undertaking for you guys to listen to six months worth of me whinging, moaning, whining, all my crap, all the crap that comes with it and stuff like that. So, um, so yeah, happy six month birthday to us all um, for that. Uh, I'm just seeing the comments popping in. So hi, Laura, Keely, Louise, um, Anne, Morris, Kerry. Um, so yeah, who'd have thought? Six months ago, <laughs> when we were in lockdown, I started this kind of concept of join Joel um, and off it goes. And, and what's going to be crazy is in 14 years time, when, when, I'm, when I'm prime minister, when I'm elected prime minister, I'll still do this um, and it will still continue. <laughs> and I might do it in a slightly different setting. Um, uh, but yeah, I'm downstairs today. Um, well, I'm, I'm always downstairs. I'm normally in my office. Um, today, I'm actually sat in a beanbag in the front room uh, the tv is just over there it's actually on at the moment emma's gone to put the kids to bed so that's kind of where i am and yes i'm very comfortable um so i'm going to do uh join joel today um we're going to talk for half an hour 45 minutes or i'm going to talk for half an hour 45 minutes like normal i'm going to drink a cup of tea that i've got down here and then i'm going to go get in the hot tub <laughs> first world problems i know um and that's my evening so um it's going to be a hard one today as well because there's so many things happening that I'm not allowed to talk about, which is really unusual for me. Normally, I will just start, I'll just tell everybody what's going on. Um, but there is, there's a few things that obviously I'm not, I'm, I'm not well, that, that will become obvious that I'm not allowed to talk about. So, first of all, production. Um, so, the production is, what have they got left? Um, uh, they've got uh, another 10 days, I think. Um, so basically shooting for just over another week. Um, so that's going. Can't talk about that at all, um, as I haven't been able to. Um, I have uh, been working on some redesigns on for, for both the jails with the marketing team and with, and with the site managers and stuff, um, but some looking at some brand changes, um, new website designs we've, we've, we've got cracking on. So we've had the first... Um, uh, images of those back and had the first look at those and we, we are going to make some changes I think some quite drastic changes um, the membership system's moving along quite nicely um, so that's all happened this week I can't really talk much more than that about it um, uh, we're having again there's a couple of other changes happening on the sites so I've been working this week with um, some planning with some designers with some architects and stuff like that um, uh, so yeah, so I've been, been looking at those kind of things this week and funny enough, last night I was sat in this exact same position at about 11.30 just chewing through chewing through plans of what, what it's going to look like um, at specific at Shrewsbury, um, which was the job I was doing last night. So that's been happening, can't really share much more than that. Um, the two site managers, Lauren and Charlie, are having a bit of a shake up of, of, of some of the ways that they want to do things. So can't say much more about that because that's not, not even gone out internally yet. Um, yeah, so it's been quite a bit happening. Oh, and I've got something arriving from America. I've just, I've just spent loads of money, um, a good chunk of cash on something that we've been trying to do for a long, 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 long time. Literally about four years now we've been trying to do, and we've just got it over the line. Um, COVID has helped us secure that. It's helped me secure that. I'm just going to plug my computer in. Um, uh, COVID's helped me secure that because I... Uh, it just has and i can talk about that actually either in a second or next week once i've got the shipping and stuff sorted but that's good because again it's another it's another product coming in is that even plugged in oh, plug my computer in but i've not plugged it in the wall i'll see how it lasts um 
so yeah so that's all good really um that's about all i can talk about um so what are people saying let's have a quick look there's the whoop whoops there's glenn um da, 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 da. i know it's been leaked that sean bean has been seen at your prison i don't think he has been seen at the prison carry in fairness um I don't, I, I, yeah, I don't think he has been. I've, I've certainly not heard anybody saying that they've seen Sean Bean at the prison. So I, I, I wouldn't know. Um, I am, funny enough, watching a film right now, or the film's on in the background, um, which has got Sean Bean in it, um, just coincidentally, um, as you mentioned him. Um, but yeah, I, I haven't seen anything on social media with pictures of anybody other than yesterday or the day before. I think I saw a prison van picture. Um, that was driving around town. Um, Daily Mirror wrote an article on it. Oh, well, the Daily Mirror writing an article on it isn't quite the same as seeing somebody in the flesh. Um, I mean, lots of places, lots of papers and articles have been written about aliens and about Elvis being seen and stuff like that. So there's no guarantee on these kind of things. So, um, yeah, can't confirm or deny anything. Um Oh, do you know what? That's a br Jonathan, I'm really glad you've asked that. And I, we haven't spoken for a little while, um, uh, Jonathan, but Jonathan's asked a great question. Do you know what? That's a really interesting one. I, that's something I, I really want to answer because that, that's a, a huge thing for me um, the last uh, couple of months as well because I haven't really been doing a lot on social media. You'll see me obviously do join Joel's and dropping in and out. And there is, you know, I know I've talked about some of the reasons behind that, but there is some big reasons behind that. And, and Jonathan's basically just asked about how am I managing to stay focused and positive um, in business during these times? Um, and it, yeah, I've, I, I will respond to that. Just give me two seconds. I'm just having a quick look at these other. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Turn down. Is it link? Might be fake news. Then. Could be fake news, Carrie. Who knows? If you've not seen him, you know, who knows? Okay, so John, Jonathan has asked, how am I managing to stay focused and positive in these times during, well, um, in business during these times? So I guess the first thing is I saw the second lockdown coming. Um, I couldn't guarantee it was going to happen. And actually, I thought it was going to happen in over the October half term, because I think personally that probably would have made a bit more sense. Professionally for us, it wouldn't have made more sense because uh, Shrewsbury was already closed because we had the production in anyway. But Shepton stayed open over the half term. It was really busy. I mean, don't get me wrong. We're really good at social distancing. We're fantastic at it. One of the safest locations in the world. I'm convinced of that. So I wasn't concerned about us having good numbers through the door, but it meant financially uh, people were obviously coming through the door. So as a business, it, it, it was good for us. Had they closed, had we locked down over half term, it would have been a real hit for us financially, a massive, massive hit for us financially at Shepton. Um, but the other side of me which is all about um uh, the benefit for everybody not not just for not just for me as a business but the bigger picture the wider scheme i do think we probably should have gone into lockdown over the half term um week and had two weeks there over the half term two weeks because i think that would have made a lot more sense rather than having to do it now for for a month um so yeah so that's that's been hard but i i was prepared for the second lockdown once we came out of the first lockdown I turned around to my team I said guys let's prepare for a second lockdown let's get everything ready in terms of let's make sure our T's and C's are in place and nice and solid which they were from the first one but let's just revise them and make sure we're there let's get all the processes and systems in place so if we do have to go through another lockdown we do have to stop tours we do have to stop bookings let's get everything ready let's get people ready for holidays booked and such like that if they haven't had holidays ready so let's get those provisionally booked in Let's get all the marketing collateral done. So let's get all the PR stuff that needs to go out, all the messages that need to go out. Let's get all of that ready. Um, and that's what we did. We, we built a plan, we executed it, and we just stuck it to one side. And my position on it was, guys, let's spend some time doing this. Let's get it right. And if lockdown comes, we're prepared and we can just instantly respond to it. And if it doesn't come, then it doesn't matter. We'll just, it will just sit to one side and never get used. And great, but let's prepare because if it does come, and we're not prepared, we're going to get screwed. Um, so that's what we did. So when lockdown 2 hit, 2.0 as it's being called, um, we were in a really good position just to respond to it. We didn't have to react. 
we responded and we were able to get the messages out really quick. We were able to communicate with our customers really quick. We were able to get refunds processed really quickly. We were able to get transfers done really quickly. So we, we managed that huge customer service piece and actually we were ready to close down the jails and wind those down. We've actually been able to get some work done inside them as well, or certainly at Shepton because um, Shrove's probably been doing it. So, so that's really helped keep the teams positive and focused because we had a plan in place. When the first lockdown came, we didn't we didn't know that was going to happen. No, I don't think very few people recognised the extent that that was going to happen to. Um, certainly, I I didn't really kind of see the extent, and there was no end date either. So it's just continuous, and you know, it could have gone bloody. Well, it did go on forever, um, uh, but yeah. So this time we were really planned, so that helped. Um, but yeah, I've, I've personally found it quite difficult because, you know, coming out of the last lockdown, I'd rejigged the business um, anyway. Um, I really wanted to get myself away from the operations, which I've done, and the team been great and taken that up. So I've been establishing myself in this new world where I've not got day-to-day -day jobs to do in terms of running the business just in the day-to-day -day running. It's development and growth I'm absolutely still massively involved in, but the day-to-day -day operations... Um, I've not really had that much involvement in recently. So I've been trying to find my place in that new world. And I had planned to do loads and loads of social media stuff and jump back into a social media world. And, and Jonathan, the, the reason I'm, sort of, I'm getting there in a roundabout way, that was something that was going to keep that I was really focused on and I was really excited about and therefore I was really positive about was stepping into this new world. And that's kind of what I wanted to do. But it, it, it kind of hit me because I took, I took a little bit of time just to just to just a week or two to give myself just some time to breathe and just some headspace. And during that time, I, I kept finding and, and certainly over the last couple of months, which is why I haven't got back into it. I've been trying to decide or trying to make the decision of who I want to be. And that, that's going to sound a little bit cliche. It's going to sound a little bit deep and a little bit weird, but. I always, I always sort of do say to people that the person I am now is not the person I want to be or I'm going to be. And it's not because we grow and we evolve. I'm not going to get too deep, I promise. But my point was that I, I believe I do things for the betterment of a wider population. So at the moment, the, the, the population I'm talking about specifically is, is, is my team, my employees, everybody that's connected to us, our suppliers, our partners, our customers. And I do everything for the betterment of all of those people connected to us. Um, and as, as our business scales and as, as, as I go through more things in life, I want to enhance that and do more like that. And I, and I truly believe that if you go with the approach of doing good and not just looking out for yourself and trying to benefit yourself, but trying to benefit others, that will come back in kind and it will benefit you. And, and that's really how I think it should work. And it really, up, I say it upsets me. It, it, it it grinds me that people have the, um, I, I'm not going to say it's a misconception, but the opinion of business owners as being um, quite cutthroat, quite, you know, tax avoidance, kind of, you know, everything for them, quite greedy, sort of fat cat kind of style. I know traditionally that's bigger business owners or bigger corporate companies have that position. Um, or have that kind of uh, people that's the expectation i guess um, in the same way as it is for bank big bank managers and stuff like that in the same way as politicians and and that kind of grinds me a little bit and i really want to you know show to people that that's not the case on the vast majority of people that's not the case most business owners want to help and want to give back and want to pay their taxes and are proud to be able to pay their taxes and proud to be able to pay their staff and actually you know they 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 just want to, 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 to do well in, in what they do. Um, and over the last couple of months, it's been really hard because every time I try and push that forwards, I'm pushed back. And every step I take and every angle I turn or every door I open, there's somebody the other side either making it really, really difficult to kind of move forwards like that, making the point that, you know why it, it just it, i don't know really how to explain it it's been really disappointing for me because the last couple of months the experience i've had and certainly the people i've spoken to and worked with and um and stuff like that and and, and conversations i've been having with people and stuff i see on social media um and stuff i see in the news it makes me just go damn do i really want to fight this fight do i really want to be somebody to spearhead this 
way to behave or this way you can behave in business and you can do it very honorably, very respectfully. You can look after your employees 100% making sure they're really, really taken care of. You can look after your customers. You can pay your bills. You can pay your taxes. You can pay um, you know, everything that as a company you should be doing. You can grow. You can look after yourself and you can still do all that in a really positive sense. And I've been like, do I really want to be spearheading that forwards? Because that's going to be a hard, a hard sell because most people you know, as I was saying earlier, have this opinion of business owners and what we do. And I think I can probably talk you through a lot of these things in a second. Um, and because of that, I'm just like, or well, do I just want to not go on social media, not highlight all the things I do and just run my business kind of, and therefore because I'm not doing it on social media and on, in front of other people, it does make it a little bit easier to do it however the hell you like because when you put a spotlight on it especially a social media spotlight it makes you question things it does make you go is that actually that ethical should i do it that way and i can give you loads of examples tons and tons of examples of how that fits um so that's why i've not been doing a huge amount of social media recently because i've been trying to think about whether and, and make a decision of whether i want to and, and if that's the person I want to become. Um, and I guess in answer to your question, Jonathan, that's kind of what's kept me focused and positive is establishing what I want to do and how I want to go about achieving my goals. I know what I want to do. It's how, it's, it's how I'm going to walk that path, that journey. Um, and that's what's been kind of keeping me motivated and focused. So I'm just going to drink some tea. Hold on. It's going a bit cold, actually, because I've left it too long. Talking too bloody much again. Right, I'm going to have a quick look through the comments. Um, actually, Jonathan, how's things going with you uh, out of curiosity? Because I saw on LinkedIn you've picked up a new, uh, I think you've picked up a part-time um, role somewhere, but I assume you're still doing um, Harlequins and that's still moving forwards and, and, and going okay. I, I appreciate your industry is going to be, be pretty smashed as well at the moment because of, the, of obviously what, what you're in. Right, I'm going to answer some comments. Um, LSJ going live again. Do you know what, Kerry? I, if you watch LSJ, you will know. I am not the person to ask this. I will tag in. I will, I've got your comment there. I will tag in um, at Lauren uh, Watkins. Ooh, where's it not letting me tag her in? At Lauren Watkins. There she is. At Stacy. Constantine, uh, yeah, I don't know is the, is the honest answer. Um, I am good to do it pretty much any time. Um, it's down to Stacey and Lauren. Um, they have more restrictions than I do. Um, so yeah, so we're, we're, it, it's a question for them really. Um, da, 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 I'm just flicking through back around through the comments. Um, da, 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 da. Sorry, I can't find them. Oh, this works our chip shop. Um, we've seen it coming as well because the government said we're going to have it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a bit of a giveaway, Glenn. Was the government saying we're going to have it? Um, Rachel, how are my staff feeling? Not working, or are they in doing behind the scenes? Bit of both. Um, there's a, there's a combination. Um, I think pretty much the entire organisation now is on on some some form of flexi furlough. I think some are on full furlough, but I think most are. Um, are on a, are on a flexi furlough because that's the the best way to run this scheme at the moment um, as as a business it gives it gives you and the employee flexibility to move things around um, what we have done um, I don't know if I if I spoke about this actually so we got we got some people are in um, on their normal hours um, because the building checks still have to be done and the site and and Charlie for example at Shepton's taking some holidays so those building checks need to be done so some of the staff are still on their hours. Um, obviously, we still need to liaise with customers and do all those kind of things, get ready for reopening. Um, I think Morris has just said that we're doing some um, just bits of work around the site. So there is, there's been some uh, painting, cleaning, tidying. We're using the opportunity to obviously get some of it cleared and cleaned. Um, we've got to be going in as well for things like there's a gymnastics club that operate from the site. So they need to go in and check their kits. We need to go in and give them access. So various bits like that. Um, Shrewsbury, most of them have been out, uh, been out on holiday, out on furlough, because obviously we're, um, we've got the production in. So there's a, va there's a variation. Um, but yeah, I think all the staff have hated not being in the day-to-day -day work and the day-to-day -day role. And that's the difficult thing, is not being the regularity of doing the job that you tend to do or the job that you, that you do. Um, uh, 
exactly. Um, uh, so yeah, so that's been that. I think I missed a question. Are they still filming? Yes, I covered that one earlier. Um, uh, da, 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 da. I love that people saw it coming. Yeah, we saw it coming. The government said so. Um, have your stuff felt not like it so yeah that's that one one thing we did do with our team was because lockdown was announced um i mean we saw it coming like i say but it was obviously announced in november for a lot of people including including our including our employees uh, november's the last paycheck before christmas and there was there's concern nationally um in every business about you know going straight back up to furlough and closing and the whilst furlough covers 80 percent of the salary costs or the staff costs if they're, if they're not working um the money that you get from being close and being forced close is nowhere near what you would generate from an income certainly not for us um and it's nowhere near covers the bills i mean i think we would get i think it's three thousand pounds a month um we would get for the um for each site in theory i don't even know if we'll get that for shrewsbury um but about three thousand pounds a month for shepton but shepton would cost us 10 times that just to run so it, it, i mean it helps but it doesn't go hugely far um uh, but yeah one of the things that i did in november was very quickly i made the decision we will just pay everybody 100 percent. that message went out to every single employee we have um very quickly at the beginning of november it was a case of guys there's going to be a combination of furlough flexi furlough not on furlough there will be a mixture across the entire organization i don't want anybody to panic though everybody's job is absolutely safe there'll be no redundancies no no jobs going um uh, and on top of that everyone will get 100 percent of the pay regardless of whether they're going to be furloughed not furloughed whatever it is everyone's going to get paid 100 percent. and that was just a decision i made straight at the beginning um, push that through to all of our employees so everybody knew that so at least they were secure in the knowledge of whatever happens through November they will get all of their salaries at the end of the month um, and that's what I'm talking about the right thing to do um, it's not always easy and sometimes it's not always possible to do the right thing because you just haven't got the money in the bank you just haven't got the money in the bank um, but yeah I was I was adamant that we had to make it work we had to find a way to make it work um, and again, you know, we were, we've put ourselves in a position where we've made sure that we've got that buffer because we saw the second lockdown happening. So that's, that's kind of how we've, how I've gone about that really. All right, let's have a quick look. Sorry, I'm just, I'm just, um, uh, every step I take love that song um okay uh, is it me or does anyone else feel they're in therapy tonight john zomcha with his cup <laughs> you guys are in therapy i'm the one in therapy oh my computer's getting really hot in my legs oh there's sean bean i've just seen sean bean just seen him he's just there I've seen him i've seen sean bean he is oh no no that's not sean bean hold on oh there he is there he is there he is there he is he's running across he's in the He's running across a courtyard, chasing Nicolas Cage. Guess the film. Um, so, da, 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 da. okay. So I'm just reading these and just reading Rachel's comments about what she's doing. Um, da, 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 working part time to get the uh, Jonathan. Do you know what? That's such a. I I I take my hat off to that. If I was wearing one, I would. Um, I take my invisible hat off. Um, uh, so Jonathan's saying, yeah, he's working part time to keep the bills paid. Um, business wise, a lot of planning and building processes. Currently awaiting a decision on Kickstart placements, which is exciting. So we're preparing for that. Oh, that's kick. Oh, that's interesting. Kickstart placements. Is that is, is that a Kickstart campaign? Is that funding that you you've gone through? Um, out of curiosity, did you? Uh, uh, we can probably have this conversation in LinkedIn, Jonathan. But I don't know if you access the DCMS funds and, and some of the grant money that was accessible, um, because you should have been eligible for that. I would have thought in your in your industry. Um, but yeah, I, I I love that that you've just gone. Do you know what? Business is not doing what it should be doing, so I'm going to get a part time job so I can pay the bills, and then business will pick back up as we as we go back in. Um, Jonathan, for those of you that don't know, um, runs a um, uh, a costume. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to get this right. A costume company. He runs something called Har or a company called Harlequin's Costume Hire, and he makes and hires out costumes for 
um, pantomimes, theatre productions, uh, shows, sets, uh, productions, films, so on and so forth. Um, I think it's got thousands, thousands and thousands and thousands of them. They're really, really cool. Um, so, yeah, so, but obviously because the theatre industry is stopping, production had stopped and all those kind of things, the business would be really slow. It's the supply chain that people don't see. You know, it's those things that you just don't necessarily get, get noticed. Um, uh, oh, Harvey Keitel's on. Um, Sean Bean's in your house. Do you know what? Do you know what? That would be amazing. I love the Sean Bean. Absolutely love him. Um, I am a big, big fan of Sean Bean. I grew up on Sharp. Um, I can remember watching um, uh, When Saturday Comes. Um, I can remember, you know, obviously I've seen some of his, some of the big films that he's done in terms of Lord of the Rings. Not a big Lord of the Rings fan, but, but, uh, but I like, obviously like him. Goldeneye was great. I mean, there's just so, so many films this guy's been in. How has he not got an OBE yet? He's unbelievable. I think that's an absolute travesty in, um, in British film and TV. And I tell you what, if I ever see him, I will tell him so that I think it's an absolute travesty that he's not been rewarded an OBE yet um, because he bloody thoroughly deserves one to play that many roles and do every single one of them in the same accent. No, <laughs> no, <I'm joking. laughs> um, but no, I think he's a great actor. I think he's absolutely brilliant. Um, so yeah, but he's not in my house. No, I'm watching him on a film. Um, uh, da, 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 da. I'm just looking through. Um, How is filming of Love Lockdown going? Oh, that was a fucking waste of time, that was. Let's pick that one up maybe next week. How long have we been on? Oh, I, don't, I don't want to do anything negative today. I'm in good mood. Do you know what, Dave? Next time you're on, um, mention that one. Um, I actually have got a behind the scenes, but a filming of Love Lockdown. Great concept. Love the concept, which is why I got involved in it, which is why I put forward the jail, which is why I wanted you know, to really help it work. Um, but the guys running it, what a waste of, like, oh, the other two producers were just so disorganized, couldn't, literally, couldn't hit the side of an elephant if they were stood in front of it. Like, you know, oh, couldn't see the forest through the trees, just, you know, couldn't organize piss up in a brewery, oh, just so many things, they just, they were crap. Um, and I've got no issue saying that because I know they, they slated me because they didn't like the way I went about things. But I was like, well, I'm coming about it from a professional standpoint of trying to get a production working that we can then go on and sell the idea and the concept to have it turn into a series. Waste of time, those guys. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Uh, no, I'm not in the prison, Glenn. Glenn, sorry, so that's that's why it's, uh, no. Um. <laughs> Keely, do we get a six month chip? <laughs> a few chips. Um. Uh, oh, uh, it's all sorry, Jules. I missed that. Could I have? Could she have a quick shout out before she goes to bed? Jules, I completely missed who it is that I'm giving a shout out to. You can definitely have one. Uh, oh, it's your daughter's birthday. Sorry, guys. I'm just looking back up to try and see Jules. Thanks for uh, Is it Caitlin? 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 I believe that's. I want to make sure I get it right. My cousin's called Caitlin. Oh, I can't find the original comment. <coughs> um, da, 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 da. Uh, I can't find it. Uh, is it Caitlin? Is it is it is it Caitlin's birthday tomorrow, Jules? Um, and if so, how old is she going to be? Um, so just ping ping us a comment, and uh, and I'll see, and I'll I'll do it for you absolutely. Do you know what Laurie's just said about we all get an invite to Joel's hot tub, hot, hot tub party? I was really tempted to do a live from my hot tub, to join Joel from my hot tub. Um, that is something I have been considering. And do you know what? I'm going I'm to come back to what I was saying earlier when I was answering Jonathan's question about um, the perception. And, and it is a perception. I don't think it's a misconception. As I said earlier, I think it is a perception. I think some of it is actually a reality. And this is, this is probably the other part that I've not maybe even admitting to myself yet. So this is going to be the therapy session. Um, 
Uh, oh, Laurie's just popped on to say she's going to be 11. So, Caitlin, happy birthday for tomorrow, who's going to be 11. Um, when we are out of lockdown, um, Caitlin, do come to the prison. Jules, if you ping me a message, um, let me know if you want to come to Shrewsbury Prison or to um, uh, Sheptomalek Prison. Um, bring Caitlin along and I will make sure that we get her onto one of the tours with the officers um, and we'll get her going around the, the tours and seeing the sites and I'll even see, depending on which jail she goes to, I'll even see if we can get her into one of the um, areas that we have sort of restricted so she can see those and take some photos um, and, and send them to her friends and stuff like that. So happy birthday for tomorrow, Caitlin. Um, and like I say, when we're, when we're out of lockdown, ping us a message, Jules, um, and yeah, absolutely bring her to one of the two jails um, and we'll make sure that we, we give her a bit of extra extra special treatment with one of the officers taking her around um, and showing us some of the areas that, that, that people don't normally get to see. Okay, um, right, uh, a lie from Joel's hot tub. <laughs> jo uh, do you know what, Glenn, I'm really tempted to invite you as well, because I think, I, think <laughs> I think that would be really funny, <laughs> right? Uh, we, could, we could have a hot tub, like hot tub time machine, but a, a hot tub live. Um, uh, so yes, yeah, so that, that could be amusing. But yes, let me let me get back to the misconceptions. So or the or the, or the preconceptions, but conception. Um, it, it's one of those things. So uh, as you will know, I'm not going to cover it again. I had loads and loads of debts, tens of thousands of pounds worth of debts when I first started the prison. Um, obviously, we've moved forwards. Um, I've paid off my debt. I have built a very successful business that is growing. Um, it's enabled me to buy the prison. It's enabling me to look at what we're going to do with Shepton and how that's going to move forward. We've got some really strong partnerships going. Still could all go peak tong. That's wrong. Um, uh, so it still could go 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 wrong um, if if we are not careful. Um, but by and large, things are very comfortable. I said to my wife the other day, um, I had the, I, I can't remember what brought it on, but I basically turned around to her and said, hey, can you remember the last time that you worried or were stressed about money? And she just looked at me and she was like, no. Nah. I was like, do you know what? And it, although it's not that long ago, it is long enough ago that we're like, yeah, it, we're, we're all good. We're all happy days. And we've been able to do things like we have a nice house. It is a big house. It's a ridiculously bloody big house. Um, although I know lots of people that have bigger houses which is kind of the thing because I know lots of other business owners that have houses. I know somebody that's got a house twice the size of mine and mine is, mine is big. Um, uh, I've recently bought a hot tub. Um, so, you know, that's, that's out in the garden. Um, uh, all the surround actually where the hot tub is. So all the, the new wall that was built and um, all, the, all the bedding is on, all the bases and stuff. Emma and I did all of that ourselves. Um, so in, in that sense, we've, we've done a lot of the work ourselves, but you know, we are in a position where we have the enough money to be able to do those kind of things. I've, we've got a holiday next year to, to Mexico because we're going to go this year. I booked the flights the other day. Didn't really want to be flying um, uh, in the... in uh, We're flying with TUI. Didn't really want to be flying in the... The, the, the separation with TUI in the main cabin, if you will... Um, in, a, in, a, in standard class and standard economy because the way they set the seats, we always have to separate. Um, and this is going to sound ridiculous now. So I looked at it and TUI do a, do, do do a premium level. They don't do a, a first class or business class. They do do a premium level. It's just a little bit more room and stuff like that at the front of the plane. So I booked those seats, which was a few hundred quid more. Um, but we're able to, and it's kind of like you'll go straight on to holiday then, but the irony of that is they're still in two seats. It's just there's a lot less seats in the row, so you get a lot more space. So, um, so it's those kind of things that I'm able to do now in, in, in the world. Um, uh, and I think kind of it's difficult because I've always said that when I'm stable, like when we're really stable, we will be able to start really giving back a lot more and in a position to give back a lot more. And that's exactly what we're starting to do. The charity is just about to start up. So we're just, just finalizing that, getting that going. And I'm feeding a lot more back into the system. And part of that is around my businesses. A lot of businesses are not spending at the moment. We are spending big style. I mean, we literally, I, I can't go into the ins and outs of it, but we are spending in the region of about £30,000 on, uh, um, on our tech website management membership systems and all that kind of stuff. New designs, new bits. I can't talk about all the ins and outs, but it's about 30K going over there. 
we're spending another sort of 25k on upgrading the um, ICT system at Shepton and the infrastructure for the internet. We're spending um, another 25k on a new project that I've been wanting to do for about four years. Um, and then obviously we've got all the things and we are going to be expanding slightly coming soon. And I've got some other businesses I want to go for. So we're, I'm trying to plow money back into the economy, not keep it in our banks, but plow it back into the economy um, because I think that's the way to get everything moving again. But as I say, I'm going around in circles, I know, but I'm coming back there. Um, it is about things like now what you see is when if I if I was going to post you an Instagram, if I was going to post Instagrams throughout my day, you'd see me potentially get up in the morning. Um, I'd have smoked salmon, avocado, poached eggs for breakfast. Not every day, but that's, that's tends to be what I like to have. Emma will go for a run on the treadmill. I'll go to work in my office um, in the prison. I'll be working in the office. And I'll have loads of meetings and do the various different bits and pieces. Um, Emma will be at home homeschooling the kids. I'll come home. I'll go for a run for an hour. Um, I'll spend some time with the kids. Not too much because they're little shits. Um, <laughs> I'm just joking. Um, I'll spend some time with the kids. We'll have something to eat. Um, the kids will go to bed, I'll go sit in the hot tub, maybe have a drink, maybe won't have a drink, do some more work, um, maybe watch a bit of TV, go to bed type of stuff. And it's, it's those kind of things that is just, it's all the, you only ever show the nice bits on Instagram, I notice. It's, you know, it's the, it's the nice breakfast, it's the nice lunches, it's sitting in the hot tub, those kind of things. And the, the, con, the, the misconception for me is that people will look at that and go, uh, rich fucker. Um, it's just somebody sort of said to me the other week, <laughs> um, uh, you know, tax dodger, um, uh, doesn't, doesn't pay what they, what they should do. So on all these kind of things, it doesn't bother me at all. Laurie just said, you deserve it. <laughs> Laurie, I know I bloody deserve it. Um, but it's not about deserving it. It's the fact that that's what I want from life. So that's what I've gone and bought. Um, but there are lots of other things that we, that we do, we give back and we spend and such like that. And I don't just mean when I say we, I don't just mean me. I don't mean Emma and the kids. I mean, as a, as a company, that's our ethos. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of, that's why I've been just sort of trying to establish, do I want to create myself that headache of people bombarding me to say like, you know, we'll get the positive comments, but the negative, and do I want to be fighting that? I don't know. So I'm waffling anyway. So uh, I'm just going to have a quick read of the comments because I saw a few coming through. Um, uh, what's going on here? Hold on, something about working with clowns. Um, uh, sorry to hear that you had to endure working with clowns, mate. You do a live with Joel in the hot tub in one of the prisons' orange suits. <laughs> the hot tub's warm, mate. It's like 39 degrees. Um, uh, here, a completely different topic, but I was wondering if your tours are suitable for somebody who's disabled. I would love to do my dad who lives in the States. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, Diane. You can do um, tours um, uh, if, if you're disabled. Uh, if you've got low mobility, the teams are really good at adjusting the tours. There are obviously stairs in them, but they're very good at adjusting the tours um, for people with mobility um, issues. And they will put chairs and things out like that. And if they do have to go up to the higher floors and you can't make up the stairs, then then you will wait at the bottom. They will do that and then they will come back down and I'll spend a little bit more time with you as well so they can they can take you through some of the stories we're doing. So yeah, they're very good at that. Um, so yeah, they're very, very good. And occasionally you'll even find Morris just chucking people on his back and dragging them up. So, um, right. Da, 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 da. I was gonna try not to demand. I, look, don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not looking for sympathy guys or anybody to defend me or anything like that. I'm, I've got really thick skin. I really couldn't give two shits what people say or don't say about me in that sense because i know how hard i've worked for it i've got the the lack of hair i've got the grayness i've got the wrinkles i've got the blood the sweat and the tears to prove it um and i've got a workforce of nearly 50 people um with a business that's that's, that's growing and generating more this year than it did last year we had good levels of profit last year despite being closed for four months despite losing a hundred grand through um lockdown we still made a decent profit um this year we're going to do even better um that's the projection that's the expectation the year after we're gone that's it you know we're really going to go for it so um you know i i haven't got any qualms about it at all i'm just saying that the reality is that's that's how it works and that's why i can't i haven't quite established exactly what i, what I want to do on social media and one thing actually you guys could do for me because i'm going to sign off in a second um is you can ping me a message or a comment um, doesn't matter if you're on Facebook Instagram whatever it is just the types of things that you would like to see me post or the things that you would like to see or hear me talk about 
because that helps me because I, I tend to find sometimes I'm posting things that people aren't really interested in necessarily or wouldn't be interested in or I'm posting the wrong part of my day so it's, it's just that kind of balance um, I can see Emma's down from the kids I assume they're in bed Jonah's asleep cool I'm going in a hot tub in a sec um, <laughs> so I've got to go um, obviously not drinking tonight I've, I haven't been running for a few days so I'm for a run this evening um, and I'm just uh, yeah so I decided not to drink tonight Right, let me just read the last few comments and now I'm going to clear out of here. Oh, Sean Bean's on screen. He's the bad guy in this film. No one's guessed the film, but he's the bad guy in this film. Um, he doesn't die either. He does get arrested and go to prison, but he doesn't die. Um, da, 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 da. Uh, to be fair, Gerald, I'm going to So I'm just reading it. <laughs> Cheers, Glenn. <laughs> Sure, she's sorry. I'm not confused. Um, yeah, I'm based in Shepton. Morris is based in Shepton. Yeah, I'm up in Shrewsbury. Um, oh, so do you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna answer Laurie's question. I'm gonna leave you with that. I think. Um. So Laurie has just asked, if you could give one bit of advice to keep people focused, what would it be? <laughs> Emma's look. She's, she's she's gone. Oh God! Oh Christ! What's he gonna say? What's he gonna say? Um, one piece of advice to keep people focused. What would it be? I was about to say it depends. Oh, that's Sean Bean. Um, I was about to say it depends on your focus, but it doesn't. I would say that the one piece of advice I would give to people is concentrate on the journey. Don't worry or panic or stress about the destination concentrate on the journey and enjoy the journey and if you're enjoying it then you'll stay focused because it's enjoyable you people do things that they enjoy um that's it, it's harder to do things you enjoy than things you don't enjoy it's hard to be positive and negative but you get so much more from it so people will do it so yeah concentrate on the journey enjoy the journey and you will absolutely stay focused and that's the way to do it and if you don't enjoy the journey then um, you're probably on the wrong path, <laughs> in fairness. You're probably doing things that you don't want to be doing. And that's just such a, I, I, I'm going to use the word sad, but such a disappointing world that we live in where people have to do things that they don't want to just because that's the way the game is for them. Um, and that's the kind of thing that I'd like to change. Um, I'm going to leave you with one little tidbit because I, 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 I've, put this up um, uh, last week, I was, I was chatting about it, I spoke to Graham about it, I threw it out with Graham. One thing I think I would probably push for as PM is I don't think people should own more than one house. So I'm gonna leave you with that. I think that it's absolutely fine. If people want more than one house, no problems, start a limited company or a partnership or some form of legal entity as a business, put your houses into that and run it as an actual business. But if you're not gonna run it as a business, as a property, owner as a property company um then i don't think people should own two houses i'm gonna leave you with that one right i'm gonna head off um you all know where i'm going i'll see you next thursday um and yeah do like i say ping me if you if there's anything specifically that you think i should be um, posting on or doing on social media or you would like to see me do or if you don't want to see me do anything on social media just let me know that too cool right next week 